this video we're going to start looking at the connection between percents, decimals, and fractions. We're going to do that by first looking at money. So in order to do this, we're going to call this one block one cent. So this, this one single block over here, we'll call that one cent. We can call this 10 cents because there are 10 of those one blocks. And I guess that makes this 100 cents or $1. All right, so we're going to use these blocks to look at some different things. You might see the connection here in a little bit, hopefully anyway. So what I want you to do is to think about what does $2.43 look like if we're going to represent it using these base 10 blocks. So $2.43. Well, in order to do $2.43, we need two of these $1 blocks. So we'll just grab a couple of those. There's one and there's two. So there's my two dollars and I need 43 cents. So I need 40 cents. The tens position is 40s. And I know we could represent 43 cents some other way, but I think just to keep it simple, we're going to use 10 cents. All right, so there's one, two, three, and four. So there's ten dollars, sorry, two dollars one right here so that's one dollar another dollar here and so far all of these together give us 40 cents because this is 10 cents 10 cents another 10 cents and a final group of 10 cents so two dollars 40 cents and now we need three of these cents So we'll drag those down here, hopefully. Let's try this. There we go. There's one, two, and three. Now the reason why I wanted to show you this this way is that it makes a connection between decimals and fractions fairly easy. So here is the one cent, here is another cent, and here is the final cent. So you can see that we have $2.43. Now just a reminder when we do this, here are the dollars. Here are the tenths, also known as dimes in this case. And here are the hundredths. So the place value here that we're looking for is really important hundredths. And the reason for that is we are going to express this as a, eventually, as a fraction and then also as a percent. All right, let's move on. I want you to try a couple of these. So I'll just put a couple on the screen here for you to try. So here are some. Let's try a dollar forty-two. Sorry, a dollar twenty-four. I read that backwards. So try to show that one. Try to show three dollars and seventy-two cents. Whoops, seventy-two. There we go. And then the last one I'm going to get you to show is twelve cents. So again, you could just draw that if you if you wanted to. You could go and find some base ten blocks online, or you could just draw that. So I'm going to just go ahead and draw that. I'll give you a minute to kind of try. You can pause the video as well. So three, sorry, one dollar was the big one, big square. Twenty-four cents means we need two of the ten-cent pieces that look like this, two of the tenths, and four cents means we need four of the hundredths. One, two, three, and four. All right, three dollars and seventy-two cents. So again, you can pause the video if you need more time. You're more than welcome to. Three dollars is going to look like this. My squares are getting smaller just because I am going to run out of room. Seven tenths means I'm going to have seven of these. That's 
that's 6, and I need one more. So that's the 7 tenths, and finally I need 2 hundredths. Now the reason why these are called tenths and these are called hundredths here is that 10 of them make up one whole dollar. So 10 of these turn into one whole dollar. And the same here, that 10 of these make up one whole here, or 100 of the pennies make up a full dollar. So that's why they're hundredths. They're divided into hundredths. All right, let's look at the last one here, 12 cents. This might seem like a really easy one. Well, we need one ten and two hundredths, so it looks like this. The nice thing here is that this is going to lead us into our exploration, connecting these fractions, decimals, and ultimately percents. All right, so let's flip to the new screen here. We're going to do 12 cents, and we're going to write this uh, like this. So we're going to give the decimal version. We'll maybe have the amount over here. So the amount was 12 cents. I'll even write it like this, 12 cents. The decimal version, we write that as 0 0.12. So that's 0 0.12 dollars. We're going to write it as a fraction. So in order to write it as a fraction, we know that 12 cents, if you think back to the picture, let me just go back and actually copy that picture for us. Let's see if I can do that. All right just so we have it here and we can refer to it. So there's our picture and you can see here that this 12 cents was 12, a, a 10 here. Well, let's see if I can write in here. Yeah, a 10 here plus two more over here, a one and a one. So this was 12 out of a total of 100 cents to make a full dollar. So if we think about if we think about a dollar, the dollar was the big square, and each square was made up of a row of ten. Twelve cents would look like this. There's a full row of ten, plus we'd have two little squares here colored in. So this would as a fraction would be twelve out of the one hundred. So twelve one hundredths would be colored in. And we've kind of looked at this sort of thing before when we looked at some money, but it's just a, a good reminder. All right, now the last thing that we're going to talk about here is percents. So in order to change this into a percent, easiest way is to take your fraction, turn it into a decimal, and you do that by dividing, 12 divided by 100. So this little line here means division. So if we do 12 divided by 100, we'll get this. So that's the decimal equivalent. And to get to a percent, we take that decimal equivalent and we multiply it by 100. So 0 decimal 1, 2 multiplied by 100 would give us 12%. So what that means is that 12 cents can be written as 0 0.12 dollars, it's 12 one hundredths of a dollar, or it's also 12% of one dollar. So that's kind of the goal here is to kind of move us towards percents fractions and decimals and to be able to move between them. And we're going to start using some money just so that you get the hang of things. All right, the next thing that we need to talk about a little bit when it comes to money, and we've talked a little bit about rounding before, but we're going to talk about rounding some money. So rounding. When we talk about rounding in Canada, we don't have pennies anymore, so we always round to the nearest nickel. If you're going to pay in cash, it's always rounded to the nearest nickel. So that means you're looking for the nearest five cents. So let's have a look at some examples. So one dollar and eighty-nine cents. What we need to do is to find the even five cents that are close to this. Now when I say the nearest five cents or the nearest nickel, when we count by fives, we either end in five or we end in zero. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and so on. So we either end in a five or a zero. I'm going to put this on a number line, and I know we've done this sort of thing before. So $1.89 is right here. I'm going to count up from $1.89 until I get to the nearest five or 10. The nearest five, I guess, and we'll, we'll count backwards as well. So 
one dollar and eighty nine cents we add one more uh, penny and we would get to one dollar and ninety cents you can see here that we end in a zero so that is a nearest nickel I'm going to go the other way as well just to s compare and see which nickel is actually the closest so I might run out of room here let's see if I can squeeze it in oh yeah this will fit remember we're looking to end in a five or a zero oh there it is right there I just ended in a five so remember the number we started here with was a dollar eighty nine we're trying to figure out is that closest to the nickel down here or is it closest to the nickel up here well you can see that the distance on the number line is really short really close for a dollar eighty nine so that would turn into when we round a dollar eighty nine we would round that to a dollar ninety let's look at what would happen if it was a dollar eighty eight instead of a dollar eighty nine so a dollar eighty eight is right here is a dollar eighty eight closer to a dollar ninety or is it closer to a dollar eighty five so again we would have to go one two cents to go up or one two three cents to go down so a dollar eighty eight is closer it's only two cents away from a dollar ninety so a dollar eighty eight would round to a dollar ninety let's do uh... let's do one more here what about the dollar eighty seven i know this diagram is getting a little bit busy but a dollar eighty seven well if we go up to a dollar ninety it's one two three cents up to a dollar ninety and it's only one two cents down to a dollar eighty five so a dollar eighty seven would round to a dollar eighty five because it's closest to that dollar eighty five basically if the number is um, higher than seven so here's anything higher than seven is going to round up to the nearest ten anything between five and seven is going to round down to the nearest five so let's do a, another example here let's look at four dollars and eighty three cents so four dollars and eighty three cents so again I'm going to stick that on a number line four eighty three I'm going to count up until I get to the nearest five or ten Here's five or zero on the end, and I'm also going to count down. Whoops, 482, 481, and finally 480. So again, we're talking about 483. Is that closest to 485? So our two options here are 480. Those are the nearest tens. Sorry, the nearest five, 480 or 485. Which one are we closer to? and you can see pretty easily from this picture that we're closest to 485 it's only two cents away and it would be three cents away in this direction so 483 would round to four dollars and eighty five cents so if we are above 482 we're gonna round up and if we're below 482 we're going to round down so the goal here is for you to kinda of practice that rounding a little bit and just get comfortable with it